Hi folks, let's take a look at how to fix this 2D adaptive. Why does it have these, uh, why is it missing this area right here? What's wrong? What do we need to change? And let's take a look at how to machine this radius of this edge in this part. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I thought this was a great example. This customer sent this in and they said, why? I don't want it to be avoiding this geometry. That's a feature that's happening on the surface below. And I want to use an adaptive to rough out this big slot. And they're absolutely right. The adaptive is the right strategy to use. So why are they getting this? Well, there's three different toolpaths we can get here. This one they sent us. This one, which is what I would call correct. And this one where you're totally avoiding these holes. Let's take a look at how to get these. I'm going to fix theirs right now, or to rather take a look. Right click, edit. The second tab here, geometry. I can see there's a whole bunch of stuff selected. So I usually say just X this right here and just start over. It's just easier in this example. So click that. This is a big no-no that we will see people often do, which is they'll click the face. And I'll admit, there's no reason why you would you should know that's a bad idea. I'm telling you, though, don't click faces as a general rule for 2D ops. Because when I click that, that's when it gives me this wonky toolpath that is, you know, sign of a, kind of looking at those holes at the level below. The right thing to do, go back and edit it, click geometry, delete that, is to use 2D contours in the 2D strategy. So in other words, I'm gonna click on this line here. Take a look what it does. It selects everything from here on over all the way to the end of the part. So see, it's all the way extending back to the edge, which isn't what we want, because I want it limited to the slot. So all I need to do now is come up here and pick this edge, click so, like so, and now it's limited my blue or purple or whatever you wanna call that color to the slot and if I click OK, boom, I get the toolpath I want. Every once in a while, you'll see it flips uh, an arrow to the wrong side. So let's say we click it here, and I'll click that now to flip it intentionally. And it, you know, sometimes, usually with open um, pockets or open contours, it may get confused. And in that case, you just click on the red arrow, and it flips it back over to the right side. can see there, big no-no. See how I only selected the one edge? It's ignoring the fact that there's geometry over here, which is a great segue to explain the difference between the 2D menu here and all of these options and the 3D menu. It's a little bit of a misnomer because fun, fun fact, there's operations like trace within the 2D that actually cut in three dimensions. And likewise, there's operations in the 3D like horizontal that actually only cut 2D or two axes at the same time. So what's up with, why are these things named that way? So the reason is that the 2D is a dumb strategy. It relies on the user to tell it where to do work. Why is it a good thing? It's a good thing because it lets you drive the toolpath. It lets you kind of say, okay, here's the zone I want you to do work in. In this case, I contain it over here and I say over here. And that's what creates, so you're building up the toolpaths. In other words, there is no option. If I click no, nothing, and just click OK, it says, hey, I don't know what's this machine. You need to tell me where to do work. By the way, the, if you did want to avoid those, the correct way would be to click here and here. Click OK first. I'm a big fan of building a toolpath up taking baby steps, so I want to avoid, let's say those had already been drilled out, it was a waste of time, let's go around them, edit, geometry, click here, click here, click OK, boom, now it's avoiding those. If you're thinking, wait a minute here, no John, it's avoiding them too far, no, that's this control. The blue represents the control point of the tool. That's where the tool is being driven, which is the center uh, of the tool. So if we take a look at a simulation and I click on one of these, you can see it is kissing the edge of that tool tangentially to the area we told it to ignore. 
hope you guys learned something there. I know there's some subtle differences there that really help. Uh, but the biggest takeaway, I think, is to understand that 2D, you're building up a tool path. So let's take a look at this 3D part. Uh, the customer actually did a great job, and they uh, they support our channel on Patreon, and they said, John, I'm having a hell of a time with this radius, and it's a really funny uh, radius, and in fact, I hit the I key, and I couldn't measure it, um, and I don't remember, did this work? Yeah, so that just gives me a length, and I'm like, well, that's not what I want, I don't want a length, I want the radius. So let me show you how I measured it. Hop back into model. And if there's a better way, by all means, let me know. Sketch, project, project. And it's gonna say, what plane do you want to project it onto? I don't really care here. I just picked this front plane here. So that's gonna orient me normal to. What do I wanna project? Well, I wanna project this. So when I click that, see how I get an arc? So what is that arc? It's the representation of that curve. That, isn't that cool? Now I can hit D for dimension, click on it, and I get 0 0.098, which I think is 0 0.196. That might actually be a metric um, like dimension equivalent. I don't really I don't remember the top of my head, but it doesn't matter because even if it was a metric, I don't have or stock metric ball end mill, so I've got to use a fractional end mill to interpolate this. So let's figure out how we do that. I think the best way is going to be a 3D contour. I was also playing with pencil, which we can take a look at here in a minute. 3D contour, though, if you read the pop-up menu, is the best strategy for finishing steep walls. Cool. Works for me. So the 3 16 ball end mill that came up by default is actually perfect because if that was about a 0.196 diameter, uh, then we're using a 0.1875 tool. We're very close, which is going to minimize the scalloping or means we have to take fewer passes to get a good clean cut. So here's the cool thing. Remember how I just said 2D toolpaths build up based on what you input? 3D toolpaths are the exact opposite. You, can, you tear them down. You constrain them and limit them. What do I mean by that? I didn't watch. I haven't clicked anything other than to create the 3D contour and to pick the tool, click OK, take a look. Now, I'm sure some of you pros out there are saying, oh, John, that's ridiculous. You'd never do that. It takes forever to compute, blah, blah, blah. Look, it is far easier to start with a successful toolpath, with something that shows the blue lines and narrow it in and dial it in than it is to get that stupid yellow or red exclamation point when you don't know what you did, why, and wrong. Let's edit, let's narrow this thing in. Right click, edit, geometry, machining boundary. This is where a lot of the mojo happens. I'm gonna choose selection, and I'm just gonna click right here for now. I picked this line, and you'll notice tool center on boundary. Let's see what happens. Okay, so good news is we've definitely limited our toolpath. Bad news is it's all happening um, both along this edge where I want of this radius, but also all this area inside the center of the model. We don't want that. So let's quickly see if we can get rid of that. Right click, edit, geometry. We can click another chain right here. And Fusion's going to know and there's no individual indicator here, but it's going to know you want to do work between these two areas. So click OK. Now take a look at our past Fusion Fridays if you want to understand more on tool containment option here, tool center, or you can just look at this pop-up graph, which is quite helpful as well. Uh, very helpful here. You can see what's happening is we're starting down at the bottom, and we're working our way up. So let's see if this is actually what we want. I'm gonna switch. First of all, actually, see how it's plunging in with the red? I don't wanna do that because by the point, by the time I got here, machine this part, this all material would be gone. So I don't wanna do that helical ramp. So edit, linking, 
plunge right here, the ramp type plunge. Click OK. Cool. It cleans up my toolpath a little too, which is going to help here for what you're about to see. I want to switch my model over down here with this little monitor. Visual style wireframe. So now we've got a wireframe view of our part. Hop into simulation. And I'm going to hover my mouse along this bottom edge here until I get a white dot. Okay, so there was the first one. Well, make sure I'm on, not on the green one here, but rather on the white one. Okay, right there. So what that is is the first you know, sort of node or endpoint from a G-code standpoint that I can pick on. I kind of wish I could pick on any point along the blue, uh, but you can't. You can only pick on points where the tool, I think it's just where it's going to issue some sort of a G-code change. So this is all one straight line. But that's what I want to pick up. I want to pick up where this tool starts in a straight line right there. And now I can hit the front button, zoom in, and you can see what I was talking about. This is a one, let's see here, 0.1875 tool, and this is a 0.196 uh, diameter. Basically, we're cutting pretty darn well until about halfway up when the radius starts to open up a little bit more than our tool. So we will need to come back up. But if you take a look, the way this, the way this model um, would run right now is your next pat tool path up would be about here, I think. Click on the front. Look, it looked like it was going to be good, but it isn't. The point where we're touching is all the way up here. So this sliver of material through here isn't actually getting cut away, which is kind of a bummer. So the first way I would think to fix that would be edit our toolpath, passes, and just increase the step down, say from 40 thousandths now to 0.005. Okay, awesome, sort of. The good news is we've got a bunch more uh, toolpath lines, so this probably is going to cut our part. But if I take a look, you know, pretty quickly, uh, even already there, I'm on like the third line up, I'm getting to the point where I'm past what I need to do work in. You know, down here was good, down here was good. I'm not clicking the exact right point, but you get the idea. And the bottom one was good, but Look at that. This is ridiculous. Why the heck would I need to spend all this time cutting up here? So again, I've mentioned this for like three or four straight weeks in a row, but a card to Rob Lockwood's video where I learned this next trick. Right click, edit, geometry, contact point boundary. Probably the, one of the coolest settings uh, I've ever seen in, in CAM software in my experience. Watch what's going to happen. Click, check that click OK, it's going to analyze where it needs to put code and nowhere else to get rid of the material. Look, it's got rid of all those wasted air passes. Notice we didn't change any of our machining boundary and we didn't change our tool path containment. We just said, hey, only do work where it's contacting this radius right here. And it's pretty darn amazing. Take a look. The first one is the bottom guy right here. So that's just kind of like our other first one where we're getting most of the work done until about halfway up and it starts to open up that area. But the second one, if I can click on it here, the second guy look it basically takes the other half of that out. So I, there's probably some way you could do some math to figure out what scallop is left, but it's barely anything. And that's it. The only reason you've got any other toolpath at all is it's adding a little bit to do some work where these two uh, fillets meet. But otherwise, what a clean toolpath. We're not cutting air. We're going to get better part finish and edge quality. Tolerances, surface finish, just such a win. Um, if you guys want to see, we'd be happy to cam this whole part up for you guys or walk through some of these ops here on a future Fusion Friday. Uh, otherwise, we appreciate the comments, the likes, and the thumbs up. Take care. See you next Friday.